Reapers, if you ignore the nonsense written on its cover and focus instead on its opening text crawl, is a film about the horrors of the Angolan Civil War. Or, more specifically, the civilian population of Angola who have fallen victim to the 20 million landmines that litter that unfortunate nation, and the thousands of amputees that serve as a terrible legacy of how dormant conflicts can continue to inflict suffering upon a nation long after wars have ended, which I'm sure you'll all agree is… Serious shit. But as I began watching Sweepers, I had a painful and very sharply angled frown on my face, as this serious shit would be the subject of a Dolph Lundgren movie. which might not translate. As I'm sure you are all well aware, Dolph Lundgren is not known for his appearing in thoughtful retellings of real-life tragedies, what with him being hopelessly addicted to machine guns and perspiration. So yes, expect Sweepers to be about as careful with cultural sensitivity and historical accuracy as Universal Soldier was with the proper rules and etiquette of zombies. Surely Dolph Lundgren knows better. Okay, maybe not. Given that squibs and loud bangs are a constant distraction for Dolph Lundgren's attention span, his filmography is understandably sprinkled with questionable career choices. But for someone who is not above taking work as a tree in a children's play, as long as he is allowed to play with matches on the ride over, Sweepers is an unexpected low point, both for its stupidity and its subject matter. But given that this is yet another feather in the cap of new image film productions, a studio that is known for producing quality entertainment, should I really have been all that surprised? Yes, as it turns out. The movie began with sad guitar wav and the aforementioned text crawl that details the reasonably serious consequences of filling every corner of a real country full of real landmines, and there's already more than a hint that I'll end up using the words exploitative bastards at some point in this video. But before the text crawl is even finished, the movie has already thrown away any semblance of historical accuracy by making up something called the Humanitarian Order of Chivalry. Doubting highly that there is any such thing, I consulted the first page of its Google search results, which grudgingly confirmed that THOK is indeed a completely fictional club that someone invented in their treehouse one afternoon, but in this movie exists as a way of making Dolph's character sound important before we've even seen him. Which certainly helped set the tone for all the other bullshit that took place over the preceding 93 minutes. The first actual shot of the film is revealed of a noticeably un-Angolan little boy who gets out of bed seconds after being tucked into it by Dolph Lundgren, who does not notice this. The child, Dolph Lundgren's son, also happens to be fully clothed, which is yet another point deducted for parental observation. But given this recalcitrant little bastard's rather specific story arc over the next 15 minutes, Dolph would have shown far more love for his son by opting instead for the tried and trusted method of keeping the prepubescent shithead chained to a radiator, but more on that in a bit. As the movie struggles to fit all of Dolph Lundgren's face into shot, we see him driving through the opening credits, arriving at his job as the best expert minesweeper Thok has ever had. Once there, Dolph is greeted with... Hey, Ace. Because again, Dolph Lundgren only takes roles in which things explode and strangers give him positive reinforcement, despite some jovial banter about how much his ex-wife hates him and how funny it is. So, uh... So he says, well, Mommy's got a pet name for you too, Daddy. She calls you asshole. <laughs> 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 oh, banter. But we see that during Dolph's early morning journey to an active minefield, his son has smuggled himself in the back of Dolph's jeep, which as far as an unintentional bring your kid to work day goes, is yet more minus points. Oblivious, Dolph gets to work as a psychic landmine detector, but is rudely interrupted by a sequence of military shenanigans and their aforementioned loud bangs. As a bunch of bad guys attack the camp and start blowing up tanks and shooting. And I am reminded that whoever said war is hell was never hired as a stuntman in a Dolph Lundgren movie. 
As our hero defends freedom with a 50 caliber machine gun, his son decides that now is the time to ask politely why he was left in the house by himself and if he can maybe get a piggyback. He may be the physical embodiment of every spectrum in existence, but I certainly couldn't question the child's bravery, as he doesn't seem all that phased by the explosions and gunfire taking place around him. Instead, he grins and flaps his arms like he just arrived at the funfair while ignoring the director's panicked instructions to stop ruining his film. But despite Dolph attempting to save the life of his son by standing completely still and screaming, this poor child steps on a landmine and is blown to smithereens in the most unintentionally hilarious way it is possible to blow up a 10-year-old boy. <laughs> Cue three days of mourning for the people of Angola. Some panpipes begin. As Dolph cradles what is left of his visitation rights, and everyone, especially Dolph Lundgren, starts crying. But considering he just had child confetti sprayed all over him, as a direct result of Dolph Lundgren not paying enough attention to that child, I would have to agree with his ex-wife and say that you are indeed an asshole. Dolph Lundgren and had no business being near that boy to begin with. Dolph Lundgren has f***ed up pretty badly here and should take some time out to think about what he did. Let's remind him. You dressed your son in dungarees instead of pyjamas. You put your son to bed in the middle of the daytime. You failed to notice when your son immediately woke up and wandered off. You left your son completely unattended and drove to work. You brought your son with you into an active minefield. You did nothing but scream as your son ran through that minefield. And you watched your son get blown up by something that was your job to make sure it wasn't there. Wow. That's some weapons-grade neglect there, Dolph. You're basically the Angolan Kate McCann, which is not okay, even if you do get to explode things in the name of health and safety. But if you were this shitty at not just your job, but also at keeping your son safe from that job, then maybe you had no business being in the landmine removal trade to begin with. None of the sense, Dolph, do you and your film make. And by Jesus, this movie hasn't even had time to put on its rollerblades backwards and start spinning around and screaming, which it does. Bravo! When shit like this was on page one of the script, then you can imagine the kind of nonsense that goes down once the helicopters and exploding trains happen. It's now five years later and shit is going down with a senator who is being held captive by mystery terrorists who are never explained. Following the arrival of a heavily collagened FBI agent, a landmine goes off on the senator's patio causing the assembled police and SWAT teams to shoot indiscriminately in every direction, somehow leaving the senator breathing for long enough to be a premise for the rest of the film. Even the Arabs who blew up the World <laughs> Trade Center had to light a goddamn fuse. Or cash in on their frequent flyer miles. You've a lot to learn, Senator. During a meeting of plot-discussing army men and three-star extras, we learn that the landmine in question is a high-tech, super-secret kind of landmine that was in part designed by the lady with the collagen lips, which makes absolutely f**k all sense whatsoever. Are we somehow supposed to believe that she helped design the landmine that tried to kill everyone in the gun battle that she herself attended as an FBI agent? How the f does that make sense, movie? Come on! So, the landmine FBI designer, who should be arrested as a primary suspect, agrees to go to Angola to look for her old boss and try to figure out the source of all the shenanigans. But before she does this, the general signs a release form for her to carry a handgun that she is meant to take with her to Angola. Why? Oh, and this gun is given to her by the US Army, across a bar, whilst everyone is drinking cocktails. Obviously, she is told to go and find Dolph Lundgren because... Boy's talent for finding landmines is exceeded only by his complete lack of discipline. Which makes exactly the same amount of sense in Sweepers as it does in the thousands of other films that have to impart character into someone who would otherwise be on his final written warning at Home Depot. She then fade transitions to Angola where Lips and her team of unnecessary cannon fodder stumble across a completely plastered Dolph Lundgren who is beating guys senseless in a wrestling ring. Which turns out to be one of the more conventional ways that Angolans entertain themselves. More on that shortly. A huge bar fight erupts, as you might expect, allowing for Dolph to look awesome and for Lips to swoon and start producing eggs. Cut to later, where Dolph Lundgren is having one of his trademark flashbacks, this time of when he was neglectful of his own child to the point of prosecution, because even when Dolph Lundgren is at his lowest, he's still Dolph Lundgren, and we must all be reminded of this with yet more panpipe explosion sound effects and slow motion. Somehow, the crack team of Dolph Lundgren investigators survived the film long enough to store a functional proximity mine in their helicopter. which I doubt would have made it even as far as customs. Meanwhile, Dolph meets up with one of the antagonists of the movie, who is a gruff-looking South African big-game hunter type. 
However, his introduction into the film comes during one of the most staggeringly deranged excuses for dramatic tension that I have ever seen, and is also horribly offensive in a way that only a Dolph Lundgren landmine movie set in Angola could be. What occurs is basically a demented version of the Commonwealth Games, or a warm-up to the Angolan Paralympic long jump, except instead of using sand pits, the participants use landmines. Nope, not joking. I'm certain I remember my mouth falling open slightly and drool forming as I watched this burly South African bad guy and Dolph Lundgren take part in a competition to race each other across a f***ing minefield to touch a plank and then return to the starting point, hopefully without stopping to ask themselves how anyone could be so oblivious to the need for both limbs and historical sensitivity. At one point, even the following line was said, First one to step on a landmine loses. <laughs> Oh good, you've explained how landmines work. Now if you wouldn't mind, could you also tell that to the population of the country you were insulting, so they can stop using them as doormats? Yes, it's bonkers beyond any kind of reason, but it's the reaction of the crowd of locals who are cheering and placing bets that turns horrifying stupidity into insulting absurdity. Or maybe this is just what Angolan people get up to when Princess Diana isn't looking, which since the release of this film is now all the time. So, after this tense rubbish, we cut back to Dolph doing his thing, namely sitting in a bar, drunk out of his mind, and paying for drinks with gigantic diamonds, which he does because this film is set in Angola, don't forget, and the screenwriter had a quota of crude stereotypes that he needed to fulfil before he was allowed to go back outside and play. Lips turns up, along with her detailed landmine schematic, and off they go for shenanigans aplenty, which includes an unfortunate encounter with an actual black Angolan child, apparently their thing in Angola, who has his legs blown off during a friendly game of football. But, because no one gives a shit about the locals, Dolph instead turns the tragedy into more plot motivation, complete with even more hard-cut flashbacks and panpipes. At one point in the film, giving Dolph Lundgren what I'm sure was the erection of his life, he is chased by a helicopter. Despite being very clearly set on fire, he manages to escape. Only to come into contact with a completely different helicopter, which itself begins shooting pointlessly in Dolph Lundgren's general direction. I'll be honest, I was unsure who I was cheering for more. Helicopter 1, Helicopter 2, Dolph Lundgren or that crazy woman's lips, but I needn't have been unsure as the original helicopter then reappears and for no f***ing reason crashes into the ground and explodes. Fair enough. After all the excitement, the pair then decide to return to the village. Except when they arrive, the village has been set on fire by the South African guy, also for no reason, and the streets are now completely clogged up with wailing extras. This crisis point of the film simply won't do for Dolph Lundgren, who after posing in front of a smoke machine, finds his best friend almost killed. Unhappy with how everything is going, he finally decides he has enough plot motivation to kill everyone on Earth. But before he does, he makes sure to visit his son's grave, which is in his own back garden, where he says, You be a good boy. Daddy's going to work. Well, I know your son was giddily excited during the final moments of his life, but I wouldn't risk cursing his soul by mentioning where you worked off. I'd say he might still be a little confused that you told him you were a gynecologist. And besides, it's all well and good telling him now to be a good boy when he is physically incapable of behaving himself, but maybe you could have thrown some of that basic advice his way before he had his limbs sent into space. <laughs> I felt that this would be a good time to make a couple of predictions about what might happen before the end of Sweepers. Number 1. Dolph Lundgren will attempt to rebuild his dead son out of the limbs of real-life landmine victims and dismantled helicopters, who will then exact revenge on wherever it is that landmines come from. Because irony. Number 2. The main villain is going to be killed by a landmine. Because also irony. The movie injects more needless plot motivation by having Lips kidnapped by the bad guys. in order to have her extract information about uh, landmines or whatever, and Dolph Lundgren falls down a mineshaft to rescue her as the heavily armed local workforce are mown down left and right. The main villain of the movie, and man in charge of making all the landmines, is at last revealed to be, spoiler alert, his best friend from the beginning of the film. Oh, and also a doctor in the local hospital? Uh, That doesn't make sense. But now, dressed like a villain and bored with all the dismantling of his landmine empire, he boards a train full of landmines, making sure to kidnap a small child for himself along the way, presumably to show off to Dolph Lundgren about how much better he is at raising children with landmines. The gruff bad guy and Dolph Lundgren find themselves in a storage room full of landmines, both ignoring just enough common sense to shoot at each other. Predictably, this doesn't go very well for the bad guy, as he is left alive but paralysed. 
To finish him off in the most ironic way that Dolph Lundgren could think of, they leave a landmine next to him and leave. When it finally explodes, the entire facility goes up like the Hindenburg, killing everyone and destroying a vital piece of Angolan infrastructure. Still keen on killing people, Dolph Lundgren chases down a train on a dirt bike and uses a handily placed ramp to jump on said train, allowing him to both show off and shoot things. The contents of all the barrels and wooden boxes decide that now is an appropriate time to begin randomly exploding as Dolph throws a man off the train, who then himself explodes. Finally, Dolph makes it to the passenger cabin, to have a dramatic showdown with the main villain. As some pushing and shoving happens, it seems the bad guy is about to triumph over a man three times his size, eventually mumbling what I'm assuming is his bad guy catchphrase. Angels can fly, because they take themselves so lightly. No, wait, whoa. Hold on. Angels can fly, because they take themselves so lightly. What? <laughs> what? What is that even meant to mean? <sighs> Eventually, Dolph gets the upper hand, as you might expect, and the bad guy is killed. Have a guess. Almost right. Yes, of course he was killed by one of his own landmines, except it was thrown like a ninja star into his stomach. Which then blows him and the train to landmine heaven. Thankfully, Dolph and the boy who served no purpose whatsoever jumped to safety to be greeted by Lips, presumably to prepare their landmines did it alibi. Dolph, Doc Lady, and their new adopted son all congratulate each other on appearing in sweepers and everything fades to black. The end. Uh... Right. Before tearing this film a new asshole, I would like to point out that there have been at least 88,000 Angolan landmine casualties. That's not f***ing cool. But do you know what also isn't? Bringing the topic anywhere even close to Dolph f***ing Lundgren. When Sweepers opened with its heavy shit, factually accurate, dismemberment-themed text crawl, I couldn't help but shift uncomfortably in my seat and mutter oh no to myself repeatedly, given that I was already fully aware that the movie does indeed star Dolph Lundgren and has a massive exploding bridge on the cover, and I like to think that I know enough about historical sensitivity that if you want to deliver an important message about a real-life tragedy, you don't find out if Dolph Lundgren is free next Tuesday. One example of the insensitivity of Sweepers is the landmine itself. I'm willing to bet that when designing the fictional monstrosity that appears in Sweepers, they included giant spikes on it simply so that Dolph Lundgren could throw it at someone, which kind of detracts from the severity of being mutilated by a normal landmine. It's not difficult to picture a series of panicked production meetings when they realized that the traditional landmines that have blown the legs off of thousands of Angolan children just weren't quite sexy enough to appear in a Dolph Lundgren movie, so they had to combine them with f***ing shurikens and have them be Bluetooth compatible just in case no one would take their script seriously. And then there's the obvious racism. Inside every Angolan, there's an American trying to get out. <laughs> of which there's plenty of. Despite being set in Angola, all the principal characters are white, with people of colour being consigned to sequences in which they either look stupid or require being saved by Dolph Lundgren. There is one Angolan person in this film that we are at least told the name of, but of course he is murdered in as dramatic a fashion as is necessary in order to satiate Dolph Lundgren's ravenous plot motivation. But of course this film didn't even know what caution was before throwing it into someone's stomach, given its insistence that the primary subject matter was fair game to begin with. The film sandwiches real, actual history between 90 minutes of a screenplay written by the winner of a serial box scriptwriting competition and Dolph Lundgren doing stupid, stupid things, and is therefore about as morally bankrupt as a movie can be without featuring midget vampires. Yeah, I'm referring to you. So yes, whilst the movie is hilarious drivel from start to finish and featured a ton of things that either made me laugh out loud or gave me explosion boners, it should not have to be explained that those aren't suitable reactions when exploring the Angolan Civil War. And just to cement this film's total lack of ethical backbone, have a read of the ending text crawl. Yup, this movie tried to take credit for an actual ban on landmines. Exploitative bastards. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more from Bad Movie Bad Review, then please like and subscribe. You can also visit badmovie-badreview.com and sign up to the newsletter for regular updates. Details can be found in the description.